Tensions remain high over Taiwan, this after the visit by the American Congress House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And also the very aggressive military drills that was triggered off by that visit by Beijing around the island. Now this, remember, is the fourth Taiwan Strait crisis and by far the worst that Taiwan has witnessed. But how is Taiwan, in fact, looking at the developments that are unfolding around it? Now, to understand this, VOA's Bill Gallo sat down with Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joseph Wu for an exclusive interview. Listen in. We talk about the status quo, especially the medium line of the Taiwan Strait. It's been there for decades, safeguarding peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. And it's a high symbol of the status quo. And the Chinese government, beginning from last year, saying that there's no such thing as the medium line of the Taiwan Strait. And their uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that the whole Taiwan Strait is China's sovereignty, and they have sovereign rights to it. And they uh, do not want the international flights or transportations to go through the Taiwan Strait. And this is a clear sign of China wrecking the status quo and the peace and stability in this area. And I think the Taiwanese people also observe that. They understand that China is becoming very provocative and very reckless in terms of its uh, military uh, aggression against Taiwan. I wanted to ask you about the white paper that China released earlier this week. As many observers noted, it sort of degraded the amount of autonomy that they envision for Taiwan. About that white paper, uh, it reiterates lots of uh, statement or uh, principles that the Taiwanese people uh, have no interest in. Uh, for example, the one country, two system model. Uh, there might be some people still have the fantasy uh, that if there's going to be a unification, one country, two system model might not be too bad. But that kind of idea has been destroyed, totally destroyed, by the way the Chinese government is treating Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong used to be uh, one of the freest societies in, in East Asia. But with the imposition of the national security law, there's not a piece of freedom left for the Hong Kong people. And the people here in Taiwan watched it and know it and know that that is something that we don't want to accept. So uh, that white paper pointed out that the uh, one country, two system model is for Taiwan. And uh, the Taiwanese uh, people, I would say that they don't even bother to react to that because it's so ridiculous. It ignores the basic facts. What would you like to see sort of broadly from U.S. policy moving forward on the Taiwan mm -hmm. issue? If you look at the Indian Ocean or far beyond, you can see that China is much more ambitious than just the Pacific. Uh, they have built the string of pearls along the Indian Ocean. They built military bases. They wanted to buy uh, some ports of the countries, and they uh, come all the way to the Horn of Africa and build a military base in Djibouti. And their influence in Africa is unprecedented, far more than Europeans or the United States or Japan uh, combined. And if you look at the uh, political trend in Latin America, I personally also worry very much the leftist trend uh, of politics in Latin America is going to provide an opportunity for China to exercise its influence in this region. So if you put all this together, China has a global ambition to expand its power of authoritarianism. And looking at this situation, I think the answer is very clear, is that all democracies need to work together to find common measures to deal with this. After all, freedom and democracy is what we treasure. We cannot allow authoritarianism to destroy what we believed. That was the Taiwanese foreign minister there, Joseph Wu, speaking with VOA's correspondent Bill Gallo. And in fact, Bill Gallo is joining us on this broadcast live from Seoul. Now, Bill, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in Vion. You just spoke with the Taiwanese foreign minister there. We heard what the Jap uh, Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu had to say. But the question that I want to ask you is this. With the fourth Taiwan Strait crisis that has unfolded, you know, in, in many ways, China has shifted the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. How is Taiwan looking at these very aggressive military drills that China has carried out? Well, you heard Foreign Minister Wu say that China is wrecking the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. And I think that's more than just a talking point. I mean, Taiwan's military has to be 
uh, very much on alert 24 hours a day with these increased flights that are coming closer than ever before to Taiwan. They're doing these very provocative military exercises. They've flown ballistic missiles over Taiwan. Uh, so in some sense, this is just sort of meant to wear down and intimidate the Taiwanese people and the Taiwanese government. But another key point here is that it is actually very dangerous because uh, not all wars start on purpose. Absolutely. A lot of times wars start as a result of miscalculations and things like that. And when you have uh, you know, two militaries operating in very close quarters for an extended amount of time, uh, this is a situation where miscalculations can occur. And this is a very dangerous situation. Uh, there also is a worry here that, of course, a new normal has been created, sort of that China will now uh, do these kinds of military exercises repeatedly, maybe just you know indefinitely into the future. And of course, that is very worrying for Taiwan security. However, I must say, everyone, nearly everyone I've talked to in Taiwan, certainly in the Taiwanese government and even in the street, support Nancy Pelosi's visit. I mean, there are mm -hmm. exceptions, of course. You know, you can never find 100%. But, uh, you know, they really want this international support right now in, in the face of Chinese aggression. Absolutely, indeed. And, and there is more international support that is, of course, coming Taiwan's way because there are visits that have been planned by a Japanese lawmaker delegation followed by the Canadian delegation that is expected to happen in the next few weeks. Um, is, is Taiwan happy with the kind of support that, is, that it is getting from the international community? It very much is. It wants to see more delegations. Of course, this is a risky maneuver. It's a risky strategy. But what we're seeing here is that China is not able to deter these international visits. Uh, you mentioned the delegations that are coming later this week. There are reports that another U.S. delegation will arrive later this week. We have a couple of German delegations that are set to arrive. Uh, a lot of this is normal. It's happened for a long time. The new mm -hmm. thing is only that China is sort of getting frustrated at these delegations. However, you can say with confidence that China is not deterring these visits. It's very possible that the way they're behaving right now is actually encouraging more of these visits. And from the Taiwanese government perspective, that right. is a good thing. And now a lot of people are in fact talking about the fact that these military drills, the scales at which they've been conducted, could not have been done by China without prior preparation. And they use the visit of Nancy Pelosi as a pretext to carry out military drills of this scale, which effectively blockaded Taiwan. Is that how the Taiwanese see it, that Nancy Pelosi's visit was just a pretext that China would have done this blockade military exercises anyway? Yes, that is how the Taiwanese government sees it. Now, there is significant debate about that point in Washington, D.C. There are very many parts of sort of the think tank community and researcher community in the, in the United States who opposed Nancy Pelosi's visit, saying, you know, why do we need to give China this pretext in order to do the things that, granted, it may have done anyway, but sort of why do we need to give them just another reason to do this? I think that's a valid point. It's a valid question. But from the standpoint of Taiwan, do they want this? Do they think it's worth it? Yes, they do. And these are 24 million people, the large majority of whom seem to support these shows of international support. They don't want to declare independence. They simply want to keep what they have in the face of Chinese threats. And I think we really have to keep in mind the perspective of the Taiwanese people, not just these major powers going back and forth with Taiwan in the middle. Absolutely indeed. Now, talking of Taiwanese people, we, we saw over the course of the last 15 days for the very first time ballistic missiles being fired over the Taiwanese airspace. So how concerned are the people within Taiwan that hostilities could potentially break out? You know, it's funny. Most international media reports that you see uh, note the overwhelming sense of normalcy and calm that uh, has, you know, pervaded the, the uh, Taiwanese society over the last couple of weeks. It's very different from the uh, third Taiwan Strait crisis in the late 1990s. What you're seeing is a lot of people going about their normal lives. They're going to cafes, mm -hmm. to restaurants, <laughs> baseball games, things like this. Uh, it, it's really life as normal. Some people say, of course, this is a way to defy sort of Beijing's threats, to say that they are not actually going to be bullied in this way. And, you know, others actually are concerned that perhaps Taiwanese citizens should be more concerned. There is concern in Washington, D.C. that Taiwan's government is not spending quite as much on its defense budget as D.C. would like. However, of course, this is a very controversial issue, spending so much right. on, on uh, military issues rather than social, issues, you know, social programs and things like that. But I can say for sure, the Taiwanese people are going about their life as normal. There are a few examples of people taking military training, first aid training, things like that. Those things are picking up, 
but the vast majority are just living life as normal. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.